gets ignored or doesn't get the proper attention or needs. I already guessed this issue that we face is the issue of climate change. If you know just a little bit about this issue, there's scant doubt as to why it's important. Floods, droughts, mass migration, extreme weather are just a few examples of its many consequences. And with and often and when we consider a lot of this issue is over our dependence on this essentially a carbon-based economy. And we can only truly picture the scale of our carbon dependence when we picture the process it takes to create this something as simple as say a cotton shirt. To give you an idea, consider the fact that first the shirt likely ends, the cotton will produce the shirt, likely undergoes intensive farm work. Which of course involves heavy machinery, which of course produces tons and tons of carbon emissions. The cotton then needs to be shipped overland to the port, and then shipped overseas to yet another port, and then shipped overland yet again to a factory. In this factory, the cotton then needs to be processed and to, move, to make the completed product. This, of course, involves several complex machinery, which, of course, produces yet again produces tons and tons of carbon emissions. Next, the completed product needs to be shipped overland. Yet again, to the same port, which is then shipped overseas yet again to another port. And then sift from there overland again to a commercial retailer. And, so, and I want you to think about that for just a moment. How many how much tons of carbon emissions that produces? Now, the statistics make it look even worse. At this point in time, we at this point in time, we have reached 0.87 degrees centigrade over the 19, 1950 to 1981 global average temperature mean. This is a change even unprecedented in our recent history. And as one can see through this, well, rather outdated graph, as after a massive explosion in global temperatures starting in the late 20th century, global temperatures only continued to increase into this century. Now, some have stated that it is extremely difficult or even impossible to respond effectively to the issue of climate change. Mm -hmm. I would say much to the contrary of such a belief. Indeed, renewable energy and new standards for energy efficiency provide us with a massive opportunity. A massive opportunity. As one can see from this graph, solar energy and solar energy alone are reaching a point at which it will be competitive with the price of crude oil. As indeed it is already it is already lower than the, the, the price of coal, at least in its lower bounds. And this is when we consider that while solar energy has seen a relatively stable decline in prices over the past few years, this is the graph for oil prices. Now, the reason for this, these extreme price fluctuations is that any time an oil producing country or an oil company feels as if it can if it's under threat from a rival, it can simply increase the rate of drilling and thus lower prices and wreak havoc upon the world economy. In time it feels it can raise prices, it will do just that. Having simply these disruptive effects. Now, when I say disruption, what I mean is anything from an economic recession to international conflict. The same cannot be said for solar. And this relatively stable decline in prices is what makes solar and other forms of renewable energy a highly attractive source of investment. Only, only new investment per year in, in renewable energy grows nearly $173.9 billion from the years 2006 to 2016, to so nearly $285.9 billion. And in perspective, that is greater than the cheap nominal GDP it is also 7.7 .7 times greater than the German military budget, 15.5 times greater than the budget of NASA, 285.9 times greater than the estimated value of Buckingham Palace, and 
stuff in the solar energy industry now in the country for a greater share of America's workforce than that of coal and oil extraction. Now, the effect, the sort of the true effect of this can only be felt when we consider the fact that 62.46% of America's power rate is powered by coal and oil, while near 0.08% is powered by solar energy. And while each country is different, I can expect that with such a large gap in the number of jobs that both these two energy types create, that this will repeat itself across the world. Now, if somehow I've not convinced you of the economic merits of renewable energy, I must also make my final argument in this, which is that the consequences of climate change on the economy are quite severe. As in the United States in 2012, Drought, just one of the consequences of climate change, cost over twenty billion dollars. Now, this also, also as well, hurricanes and extreme weather can have similarly sort of effects. All of these, all of these natural disasters will only become more frequent and increase in magnitude as climate change progresses. And if you do not think that a world's stable prices, increased investment, increased growth, and low unemployment is better than what is not better than one uh, is better is worse is is worse is better than one of of uh, extreme weather, drought, and disease. You know what it is? The time is now to act. To spread the word if you can. The time is now to real. The time is now for if you are an investor to invest. If you are a corporate executive, convince your company to invest. If you are just an average citizen, long your representatives, convince your government of the importance of renewable energy. The time is now to realize that what we see as a major obstacle is in fact a massive opportunity for fundamental growth and change in our economic system. And the time and this and this this these policies are the next step. And the fight against climate change and the first step in a, re in a revolution in economic thinking. And that is what I want all of you to think about by the time you leave here tonight.